welcome back on my first step ever firstly let me tell you that we are nearly completing 73 episodes and thank you so much for being on this journey with me so far and it only means that you believe in the story of people around you as much as i do because they are genuine and they tell you one thing for sure that is that if they can so can you we all come from the same place place of having a dream having to achieve something a goal but what you do with that is what defines you and that's why we have some accomplished and successful guest speakers who tell us all the behind the scenes of their journey so welcome my guest speaker our guest speaker for the episode today amanda mcneil all the way from australia hi amanda hi everybody <laughs> i am extremely excited i think you can see that from my smile right now because i know that you're going to get into very very interesting stories in your journey and before i dig into that let me introduce you to my listeners today so amanda mcneil is a resilience and empowerment coach and the founder of you empowered coaching and that's why we have her here she specializes in working <laughs> with major life changes helping people get out of their comfort zone by building their resilience and confidence now don't we like someone like that breaking through those limiting <laughs> beliefs and empowers them to take control and make the major change so they can go and live the best life they want the life that they want to create i think that is an amazing service that you're doing to the society amanda and before we come to understand that what do you do as a coach in your coaching business what is more important is to understand mm-hmm. how did you come this far so let me start mm-hmm. all the way from the very beginning while you were growing up while you were a teenager what was your surrounding and what was your mindset back then yes so i mean i remember growing up i was actually always a pretty confident child like i was a very strong willed Uh, some may call it stubborn I like to call it strong-willed and I always kind of knew my own mind when I was growing up so I liked to push boundaries even as a young child Um, you know I have an older sister so I guess there was always this competitiveness as well between my sister and I and I think you know if I look back on my resilience journey and what started building my resilience I definitely think that that probably had a really good you know, part to it. But I was a sporty kid as well. So I was always, you know, that was where I excelled. I wasn't so much the academic in my childhood, uh, certainly the sporty child. So again, you know, just having to learn to work as a team. When you had failures or you lost a game or you lost a match, it was about just dusting it off, trying better the next time. You know, when I was doing my individual sports, if there was someone faster than me or if there was someone who did it better than I did, I was always training and always working hard to beat that person, right? So, you know, thinking again about that resilience journey, that's definitely where I think it all started. And from that, the mindset was very much about that growth mindset and you know I always I was very fortunate I had a very supportive network in my family when I grew up and they were always encouraging me just to have a go so it didn't matter what it was just have a go and if you're good at it awesome and if you're not that's okay you'll find something else or you'll improve so again it's that growth mindset it's about building that resilience about dusting yourself off and keep forging forward which is, I think, you know, where I started and I've just continued that journey throughout my teenage years and even throughout my adulthood, very much that same growth mindset, that positive mindset as well. You know, being the optimist, I'm always optimistic in life. I'm not the pessimist. And so having that optimistic point of view and perspective, it really helps when you do face challenges in life because you are going to face challenges so many different challenges 
And it's about just making sure that you continue to try and stay positive, that there is always going to be that bright, you know, bright light on the other side of the dark storm that you're going through. So, you know, very much those were the lessons that I learned as I was growing up and certainly through my, you know, teenage years. It's always a difficult time probably for, you know, for females, young teenage girls, crazy hormones, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, there was a lot of challenges along the way. But as I said, I had a very supportive network and I was always encouraged just to give anything a go. So, yeah, that's what's brought me to where I am now. Amanda, that is such a positive environment that you were brought up in. And I can see a lot of positive, you know, ways of dealing with the situations you were competitive, you were into sports. And I really believe like genuinely that sports is a place, you know, it is kind of an institution. It's a learning institution. You can learn so much about life, about resilience, about your own self. So I'm happy that you had that from the very beginning of your, uh, I think, childhood while you were growing up. And I can definitely see the spirit that you have that has inbuilt from the very beginning i just wanted to understand going forward we when we reach our teenage time or when we go into college it is a very different scenario people who are even very strong will strong minded they do face situations or we do come across with imposter syndrome and sometimes we start doubting ourselves did you ever face any situation down the line beside your strong will and your amazing personality and the growth mindset that you always had from the very beginning? Yeah, of course. Everyone suffers from self-doubt. You know, everybody has those moments where they do find themselves out of their comfort zones. And it's when we come out of our comfort zones that we really start to question ourselves about, am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? It's coming from that place of the fear of the unknown. And we've all been there. I've certainly been there many, many times throughout many points in my life, um, particularly, you know, when you are moving into a new environment, like the comfort of your high school, and then having to move to this unknown and environment that's you know so big and so vast and it's such a scary place to initially be but what you find is if you can continue to have that optimistic kind of mindset and perspective on things you will soon get to learn the new environment you will soon get to make new friends and you will soon get to call it your home and that's going to be your new comfort zone right but here's a beautiful thing every time you push yourself out of your comfort zone every time you push yourself just to do something that you're a little bit scared of or a little bit fearful of you start to expand your boundaries you've got the courage because you've done it before and you know life isn't going to end and you just continue to push yourself so you you continue to expand those boundaries and that's when you really understand the possibilities that are available to you is when you push yourself out of that comfort zone. And definitely that transition from high school to, you know, college, university, that's very much a big change in someone's life. And you do get, you do get filled with that self-doubt, but it's about that being positive, having that belief, having that growth mindset, and just backing yourself and being able to know that, this will too eventually become my new comfort zone. And so if you can if you can try and continue to keep that kind of positive outlook, then things aren't so scary. This is such a beautiful thought. Keep expanding your comfort zone. Initially, it becomes a zone where you're not comfortable, but that uncomfortable zone start becoming your comfortable zone. And you are increasing and expanding mm -hmm. the zone that you can operate and perform in. That is such an amazing understanding, exactly. Amanda. I am really thrilled to know that, you know, everyone faces kind of similar situation. And as you mentioned, like while even you were in your university days or university time that it was a very scary environment for you as well but you did expand your comfort zone so I would like to dig a little deeper over here and for listeners or viewers 
I think they're more, more of them, most of them are youngsters and they might be dealing with certain situations, mm-hmm. even though they are very positive, they are very strong will. Sometimes we know what is right, what is wrong, but we are just not able to come out of it or we just give up. Has there ever been any a particular situation in your life, in your university time that you can share with us and what did you learn out of it and how difficult or easy was it for you to come out of it? Mm, Yeah, so this is a little controversial, I have to say, but when I started university, um, I actually went into doing a course that didn't actually sit right with me. So I thought it was going to be very health and wellness based. It ended up being really about, you know, the health administrative services and you know kind of the back end behind the health um, system I guess and you know my parents were very much like you have to go to college you have to go to university and so they were kind of forcing me to take this path which I knew wasn't authentic to me and it really I you know there was something inside of me that was just like I went because my parents told me to go and I continued to do the lessons and I can continue to do the learning but it wasn't until sometime it probably about halfway through my doing this, I actually made the decision that I was going to drop out of uni. <laughs> so now, now I'm not encouraging this for everybody who's listening now, but what I am encouraging is you've got to stay true to yourself and you've got to do what's authentic to you. Because if you're not living an authentic life, well then, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you're not going to put 100% into it, are you? So you really need to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing is authentic it fulfills you because you only have one shot at this life. So why waste it doing something if you're doing it for somebody else? Like I was doing it for my parents. Um, At some point in time, you have to find the courage to look within and ask yourself a few really deep questions. And if the answer to that is, this isn't true to me, this isn't true to who I am, and I'm not living my authentic life, then that's probably a time where you need to find the courage and make a decision that could change the course of your life, whether or not you go through a life where you're just doing things for other people or you're actually going to take control of your life and do what is right for you. And I guess that's the biggest lesson that I took out of that. Not so much that I, you know, dropped out of uni, but the fact that I really looked within and found those answers for myself. This is so great that I think you have that courage and that mindset and that Mm. perspective to really stop for a minute when things were not going right for you to really ask the right questions peep inside your heart and brain and when you got to know the answer I Mm. know that must have been a very scary situation because that's when you have to take an action and that's where most of us Mm. back out because that is the most difficult thing to make a change even if you really want that it's very difficult so first of all Amanda kudos to you for you know taking that step now again as you mentioned I also would like to highlight this to our viewers and our listeners that we are not talking about the way of you know keep dropping out of something or keep quitting something that you're on it's more about are you on the path of what you are really looking forward to if you are on the path of what you're really looking forward to you will find ways to never give up and sometimes I've also experienced that Amanda I I would like to have your uh, thoughts and opinion about this that sometimes you really want something really bad and you think that you want that and once you get that you realize now this is not what exactly I was looking for this happens with a lot of people. I think that's okay as well. Again, as Amanda said, that's the time when you ask questions. So Amanda, what do you think about this situation? Yeah, look, I completely agree with you. And, you know, there are a lot of people who just love the challenge of life. And as soon as they've overcome that challenge, they're like, right, okay, I'm ready for the next one. Bring it on. Where is it? You know, um, and that, that's, a, that's a healthy thing to have, right? You know, because you're showing some great resilience there. but The other thing that you also want to be mindful of is instead of always trying to look for the next thing, it's to reflect on those moments and and ask yourself, okay, so why am I not being fulfilled by 
overcoming this challenge and then being in a place where I'm satisfied with where I've gotten to. So are you playing to your authentic strengths? You know, is what it is that you're choosing to do really playing to your strengths and is it going to highlight what it is that you're really good at? Or are you just going after something for something's sake? Just to say, yep, I've done that. Yep, I've done that. So again, I think it comes back to a place of authenticity. And a lot of, you know, what I've learned through my experiences in life, and I've also reached out for outside help to help me go through these self-reflections, is what is it that I want to do with my life? What are my values? What are my beliefs? Because if what you choose to do aligns to your values and your beliefs, then you'll never make a wrong decision. But you need to have those very clear and you need to have a strong purpose for what it is that you're wanting to do. So for people who achieve those things and then, you know, kind of move on to the next thing, my, my question to them is, do you know what your true purpose is, what your true passion is? Like a lot of people talk about, what is your why? Why do you want to do what it is that you're doing? Because I think if you have a strong sense of purpose, then you will actually change it changes the decisions that you start to make for yourself and it changes the direction that you will take in your life as well and again aligning to your values and your beliefs and if all of those things are working in harmony then that is when you can really find the challenge grow with the challenge but be fulfilled by the challenge and not want to continue to seek you know other things to you know move on to quickly so I think those would be the key key things that I would share. I really like your view and perspective. And that's a takeaway that I can share right now is always ask your why and always understand your values. Amanda, I think you have summed that up so well that why certain times, even if you want something and you've achieved it, you, you want to go for something else. It's exactly the situation of where you are following someone else's dreams because again, you're not true to what you want. Mm. So that's really good. And I also want to kind of tell this to our listeners that it's okay. You can take some time in understanding what you really want. But when the time comes and when you know it's not going right and we start asking your questions, then there should no, not be any looking back and you should keep going at it and expanding your comfort zone, as Amanda just mentioned. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and just to add to that, your why can change over the course of your life as well. I mean, certainly when I was, you know, in my early 20s, it's different to my why when I was in my 30s. And now that I'm in my 40s, you know, I'm constantly evolving. We evolve as human beings. And so it's okay to evolve your purpose. But I think that we all have a core set of values and beliefs. So as long as we stay true to those core values and beliefs, regardless of how we evolve as individuals, I think we will always come from a place of, you know, of wholeness and fulfillment if we continue to hold those true to us. Wow, that makes so much sense. We are evolving every time. And I think that's that's why you, one needs to keep reviewing time and again that what you are thinking and what you like at that point in time. And besides all this, you definitely not look in your 40s. You definitely look much more younger than that. <laughs> <laughs> it must be the lens <laughs> i think that's reflection of your happiness and that you're satisfied and that you're looking forward to live life i can always mm. see in amanda's post if you are listening to this you can always check out amanda mcneil's post on linkedin that's where i follow her she is a super super power energy ball and you just when, whenever I read your post, it feels like you really mean what you're saying and they're always good and bad days and you are always in your real self whenever I see you over there. So thank you for sharing that. Now, coming back to the questions that we were in, we have seen you grow from a very confident child to a teenager who also started expanding her comfort zone and then a person who is able to shift her evolving self and focus on herself. So how did you think of becoming a coach, a resilience and confidence coach? What went behind your first steps? Mm. So, uh, you know, as we mentioned, there was a lot of experiences that I went through in life where I was constantly evolving. But I think the you know, there's always this defining moment that changes your perspective, 
and where you see yourself in life. And that came to me when I was in my corporate career. So I've been in a corporate career for 27 years. And, you know, I was doing a job which I initially was very passionate about. So I was an event manager for a very large telco. And what had happened, though, is over a series of years, the culture of that company and certainly the team that I was working in started to get quite toxic. Um, And, you know, it was a slow burn. But by the end of sort of like the seven years to the point where I really became, you know, my mental health was really challenged and I actually suffered burnout from from the job. So it was when I was over a Christmas, you know, Christmas break and I was actually reading and trying to think to myself, how am I going to cope going back into this environment for another year? How am I going to do this? And that's when I realised that I was not in a healthy place with my mental health and I needed to make a decision for myself. And it was a hard one to make because, Absolutely. you know, I was on a good salary. It's the safety of your corporate, you know, the corporate career is, is security and it's safety, right? But all of that didn't mean anything if you don't have your health. And so that's when I found the courage to make the decision to actually take a redundancy from my job. Now, by doing that, I had I did have a plan B because I'm a woman with a plan. I always had a plan, backup plan. Um, And I was studying a diploma of counselling and I thought that this was going to be my new path. But interestingly, as I was going through that and doing the, you know, the work experience of that, I realised that, again, it wasn't really exactly authentic to what it was that I wanted to contribute and give back. So I actually hired a career coach and I worked with my career coach and very quickly we made the breakthrough. Coaching was the right fit for me. I could still use and apply all the skills that I had learned from my counselling course, but the coaching part of it was what really lit me up. It was the thing that made me excited about life. But, you know, I had to do the work to get there. I had to work out what my purpose was. And I think having that break after I left my corporate job, before I found the the coaching side of things, I really did a lot of that self-reflection. I really looked within, I realigned myself to my purpose and my why. I really kind of listed out what are my values? What are my beliefs? What, what is it that I want to contribute? I knew I didn't want to go back into another corporate job because I wanted to do something with, that was of more service to people where I could help people through my experiences. So that is how I made my first steps towards my coaching journey. And once I realized that coaching was the thing for me, I just went all in. I, you know, kind of got course certified and I built my business and I named my business and all that sort of stuff. So um, it was really an exciting journey. But that journey in itself is hard as well. As you probably know, like going into business for yourself you know, people focus on the success of it. Well, before you get to the success, let me tell you, it is a lot of hard work and it's following processes and systems and it ain't glamorous and it ain't sexy, but it's determination to continue to forge forward, go through the failures, keep going regardless, because if you want it bad enough, then you will make it happen. Um, and so, yeah, they were, they were kind of my first steps towards realizing my coaching journey. All this makes so much sense to me and everything that you said right now is so true. And i like to congratulate you on your journey of taking the first step because as you rightly mentioned, Amanda, it's a journey in itself. Like right now, you are just sharing from your perspective that what you had gone through but we definitely cannot feel that what you must have gone through mentally and emotionally while taking that journey because it's super scary to you know go in the direction Mm. of something that's very uncertain and I'm really happy that you could share that very very important part of how it all began even before anything tangible began so thank you so much Amanda I would like to ask you one more question For our listeners and viewers, for everyone who's listening to us today, can you leave us with top three tips of how we can build resilience and confidence? I would love to. So one of my key things about building your resilience is having a clear focus and vision. We talked about purpose, but having a really clear vision about what does that look like? 
So you want to make it specific and you want to be able to feel what it looks like, feel and see and hear and surround yourself with what that vision is because the clearer you are on your vision, regardless of what challenges life throws at you, you still have a focal point to continue to forge forward. So that's my first one. The second one is, is that awareness piece. So it's really about that self-reflection, understanding what your, you know, awareness of what your triggers are, awareness of what your emotions are, your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviours and how you react to those. Having an awareness of who your support network is, is very, very important. But also having an awareness of of your inner critic, of that self-doubt that creeps in. Because when you have an awareness of that, then you can choose to change the narrative, change the language to something that is more positive and that helps stamp out that self-doubt. And then the last one is know your strengths. Always come from a strength-based approach, right? So always want to play to your strengths. Don't, you know, when you're coming out of your comfort zone, that's scary enough. But if you know what your strengths are, you know what you will naturally fall back on that's going to get you through breaking that barrier and expanding that, that, that comfort zone for you. So those are my key things. It's, it's knowing your story, having that really clear vision is having the awareness of all of the things that can get in your way and how are you going to combat that. And then it's about knowing what your strengths are because your strengths are what are going to get you to the other side of that challenge. And you will come out stronger and better for the experience. I can guarantee you. Super powerful, super logical. And it really is effective when you start applying everything that Amanda has shared today. So Amanda, thank you so much for summing up the top three things that everyone can do today to start building resilience and confidence. And I know I said that was the last question, but there is one last question, actual last question. Can you leave our listeners with a quote or a saying that you resonate with the most? Oh, I've got quite a few, but I will pick maybe my top two. I am a bit of a fan of Tony Robbins. I love his stuff. And the way he lands his message just really resonates with me. So hopefully it will resonate with your listeners as well. So the first one is change your story, change your life. When you have a story that is limiting to you, you have the power and the ability to change your story. So by changing your story, you can change your life. And the other one that I'll leave you with is success lives on the other side of fear. So every time you can get past that fear, success is always on the other side. So they're the two ones that I will leave you with. I won't bombard you with too many more. (laughs) That is so powerful and so beautiful. Change your story, change your life. Lovely. I just love that. I love both of them, but I think I resonate with the first one even better. So thank you so much, Amanda, for being on my yeah. first step ever. It was a pleasure having you and chatting with you. And thank you so much for allowing us to peep into your life and your brain and also, you know, kind of understand the vulnerable situation that you were in, which is not easy for all of us to discuss and share with so many people. But thank you for the service that you're doing. And to all my listeners out there, as I always say, start believing in yourself and keep believing in yourself.